Hi, I'm Alan Steinheimer. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. We're here today on a stage, uh, as you can see, a white psych. Uh, we're doing a fashion shoot, um, and there's some conventions about fashion shoots. One is an octobank uh, for the close-ups on the eyes. Um, we have some low fill here for the hero position, which is the one sort of closest to camera. Um, and then we had a, a particular uh, issue here. Um, one of my least favorite things to do is to duplicate someone else's shoot, but that's what we were asked to do today, um, or we started yesterday and today. Uh, so we were told basically we need to match the existing footage where there's actually a light gray wall, but a white floor. Um, sort of uncommon, you know, for white psych shoots. Um, so we have a 20 by 20 top light here working at doing a lot of the floor. Uh, there's eight S60 sky panels in there. Um, years ago, we probably would have done that with 2K space lights, but you know, if you dim those, they would change color. With these now, uh, we can lock in the color and then we dim to you know, suit ourselves. Um, also, we don't have to worry about exploding bulbs that would occasionally happen with 2K space lights and, and weird things like that. Um, I've also got some back here. We put a, a row of 120s up, um, sky panel S120s, and I like the long linear configuration of them. It reminds me sort of of the 4x4 Kinos. Long linear lights are really useful in a lot of situations. For this kind of backlight thing where people are going to walk back and forth here, uh, it gives a nice consistency. We started off with a solid teaser here uh, that was a 12 by 20 folded over and then we ended up putting an ultra bounce and if you take a look here you can see there's a white and so that's the the amount of white bounce that we get from those S120s back onto the wall ended up being the way that we could control um, the uh, the amount of light gray there. Now not my favorite to have one set of lights doing more than one job. Ideally, you actually have, you know, every light has its own job. It's not trying to replicate two things. So in this case, it's backlight, and then it's also bouncing into the white and coming back and shading our gray. So we're not completely white, but we're also not completely too dark. Um, you make compromises on every set. That's what we did on this one. We also have a light mat eight that helps cover the walk. So here's our walk towards camera. Light mat eight covers me in the back position. We get up closer, we come into the octobank. We also have the two low lights, uh, sort of a traditional kind of approach to fashion where you're getting in under the chin, making sure that everything is fairly high key. We did shade this a little bit and this uh, 360 is down at 50% so that the octobank is essentially giving us a little bit of modeling on the face because uh, every model only, only gets about 20 minutes. Um, didn't have time to start resetting things, changing the light for the sideways walk versus the up walk. So a little bit of a compromise, bigger sources, pull them back, less f-stop change as the uh, people move back and forth. Um, so I'm liking these light mat eights. Uh, put it on a little menace arm. Uh, they're so light. Um, it's one of my favorite things basically about light mats altogether. Um, and then they have a new ballast. Uh, thank goodness, finally, um, they have a digital readout that's easy to read. You can um, actually power two light mat fours with this one or a single light mat eight plus. Uh, this is their 24 volt system. Um, and it's also got lumen radio built in. I haven't actually tried to use that yet, but I'm assuming it will work uh, as well as the Kino stuff does. Uh, so really liking this improvement in the light mat stuff. So we're on a scissor lift now. We're going to go up and take a look at those S60s that are up above the 20 by 20 half grid. Uh, scissor lifts are really a common thing on a bigger stage. Uh, the, the pipes here I believe are 18 feet off the ground. It's just not really possible to work a stage with an 18 foot grid from a ladder it, or not safe in any case, even if you didn't have a ladder big enough. So let's go up. Here we go. The thing that's great about scissor lifts is you can drive around while you're up high 
And so you can sort of make a continual adjustment to lights and cable and the like. You can see the S60s in the back row are actually pointing to be a little bit more of a backlight. And then the ones in the middle are basically a straight down sort of toppy light. Of course, to some degree, by the time you go through a big piece of diffusion like this, it's one big soft source. But I do find that the angle of the light makes a, makes a small difference. And then we did think about a 12 by 20 here. We were concerned that there would be dribble off the front. We were gonna have to box that in. Um, it seemed easier just to go ahead and put the 20 by up. It wasn't gonna be any more rope than, than the 12 by. Uh, and then it's always nice when you're building one of these big soft boxes, if you can, to go ahead and put white on the inside walls. Uh, you almost always want a teaser on these things because you almost always have spill light, especially with an S60 that's you know basically a floodlight, so to speak. We didn't care about the sides. Normally we might box in the sides uh, again with white. In this case, we figured it was gonna hit the white wall, contribute to our overall sort of high key uh, lighting on this setup. Um, so we didn't mind having the spill there. But we didn't want it on the back wall. We, that's where we needed a lot more control in terms of being able to dial in that light gray. So, and again, that started off as black and then we ended up with the, the 12 by ultra bounce. Um, I just needed a little bit more bounce back towards, um, uh, towards the uh, back wall there. So we used 360s here for our broad sort of base light. You know, we could have used HMIs here, uh, but they just don't respond as fast in terms of dimming. So in a situation where, you know, you don't know if you're gonna to need to dim in between, you know, different actors or in this case, fashion models that are walking, uh, it's so much faster to work with LEDs. Let's go take a look at Luminaire that we're controlling this whole setup with. I'm a little bit of a newbie on uh, Luminaire. Uh, this is only my second really big shoot with it. I've used it on a couple small things. Um, it's pretty good. I'm still learning a few things. I haven't really learned the whole grouping thing quite yet. Uh, but as you can see, um, Right now I've got these ganged together. That's the back row right here. So if you look up at the uh, top light there, I have control over that. And uh, I think we had that at 55. And I can potentially control the color as well. There's uh, full warm. And then here's where we've been running things at 70 for uh, about 5200. You know, all these systems are a little bit of a work in progress. I, in a way, I wish I didn't have to look at all of these items here. This is protocol two on the sky panels, and uh, it gives you all this um, potential parameters of control that I just don't need on a stage shoot. I don't need green, magenta, I don't need fan control uh, or preset or strobe. Um, hopefully one of these days, either I or, or when someone else is going to figure out a way that I can isolate and just have my two uh, controls, basically dim and the color, you know, that's all I really need for probably 90% of my shoots. You know, if I'm, if I'm basically not doing RGB, then it's just really by color, you know. Um, anyway, you slide them, uh, let's see. Uh, And so here's, so all the lights are here and I've gone through and I've done, uh, I skipped some DMX numbers to make it simple, uh, both to remember and also to have a little gap in between. So I started one sky panel at uh, 001, next one's at 10, next one's at 20, 30, 40, et cetera. Nominally, they're only using six channels. Actually, they're really only using five channels in protocol two, um, but it just seems, easier, simpler to remember. If I just go by tens, I have 512 here that I can use, so it doesn't really matter if I start to get into bigger numbers. Also, this doesn't show you the numbers in between, uh, so it doesn't, in a sense, Luminaire doesn't really care where you assign it. They'll all be butted up next to each other. All right, uh, one other thing I wanted to uh, cover was um, a lot of people are using the Centena AKS uh, for their base station uh, for all this wireless work. Uh, I happen, 
I don't know. I ended up thinking that maybe the Skylink was going to be better. It's set up with Stellar to do RDM, which the current AKS uh, can't do. As it turns out, uh, I used Stellar a couple times. I liked it, but it doesn't control non-airy lights. Uh, a little bit of a fatal flaw for me at this point, since I have a mix of lights. Uh, like today, we have light mats. Um, so I'm still using it as the base station. One peculiarity I find with this is that there's a, a, a link button on the back that doesn't really seem to do anything. Um, you actually have to go, um, I have to go to uh, my settings here. I have to actually, I had to input the number and then I use this link button right here, CRMX link, and that seems to actually work. I such a newbie at this i can't tell you why that works and the other link button doesn't but so you know we're basically cobbling together this wireless stuff so i have luminaire working with an airy product the skylink i have a couple of the uh, airy receivers but mostly centena um, some of the centenas have batteries some don't uh, it's useful you know the batteries for a light like an astro where it doesn't have a usb power outlet um, the Aries all have the USB power outlet, so I tend to use the non-battery ones on that. So it's a little bit of a mess, but that's reality, you know, 2019. Hopefully it'll get cleaned up at some point. So that's our fashion shoot for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. In this case, we have the uh, S360 on a regular Roadrunner. Um, they're great stands. Um, locking, the locking wheel system is really great. Uh, on the other side, we had a BOA, uh, which is another um, cr high, heavyweight crank rater stand made by American. And it's just the uh, sort of miniature version like the small uh, crank evaders. There's no, um, there's no real it's not the clutch that we used to have to push the button in on crank evaders and stuff. Uh, these ones just go up and down. So and it's actually, if you can believe it, it's actually easier to crank it up than it is to crank it down. Um, I think they just got it tightened to the point of where, you know, they don't want it to come undone. Um, so I love these stands. They're big. They take a little bit to learn how to use. It's not altogether obvious. They have these little cross supports, uh, but uh, greatly improved product. Uh, my name is Joseph Seif. I'm a director of photography. I'm based here in San Francisco and LA. I go back and forth quite a bit. I've been working with Alan for years. Um, we used to do mostly years ago, like corporate tech stuff, that sort of thing that everyone up here does. Um, but I've, I noticed something amazing about Alan and just from early on that he's a true artist in every sense of the word. And um, I felt like every other personal project that I do that's not, you know, that. Anything that needed like a little bit of flair or a little bit of sophistication, he was the best person I could think of for the job every single time and he delivered every single time. So um, fast forward a few years, now we're doing more commercials together. Another reason I like working with Alan is because we collaborate really well. We have kind of a shorthand. And I think that's really important when I work with my gaffers that I have that shorthand, that I'm not kind of starting from square one with them. And, and I also really respect and admire their personal styles, you know? Like, and he's, he's my favorite gaffer in the Bay Area by far. Um, but I love everybody else. No, nobody get pissed about this. But <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know, um, DPs yeah. have to have like a couple mistresses if you have a yes. couple towns. So you have an, a gaffer down in LA. I, I have, you have an, one yeah, up here. I have a main gaffer in Los Angeles. I work with a lot. Um, he's fantastic, but they're they're very different. I mean, um, the thing I like about Alan working, you know, over the periods of time, I've, I feel like I've grown, and he and he's kind of been there to kind of help mentor me in a lot of ways, and um, and I also feel like I. I can completely trust him to deliver like the, the visuals and the refined kind of look and feel that I'm looking for. And um, that all comes down to his experience and his just insane encyclopedic knowledge of lighting and um, 
and he's also, I want to say, super kind of like on the cutting edge for a lot of lighting technology. Um, so tell me a little bit about yeah. that. How, how important is it to you that um, the people you hire have the, uh, the latest and greatest? Um, I'm, I'm not a very, I'm kind of a gear agnostic person in a lot of ways. It's not about gear for me. Primarily it's about style and aesthetics. I try to go for that. Um, but it does help that Alan has been, you know, very much, you know, cutting edge with his, you know, investment in sky panels and LED technology and that sort of thing and programmable app-based lighting interfaces. And, and in fact, we're using that today and we're doing things that are kind of like, I want to say, you know, not conventional in some ways. Like we wanted to warm up the set and I felt like maybe we can just bring the lights to 5200 and I made the camera. Uh, I set the camera to 5800 versus just blasting it with a, a warming kind of tone because since we're shooting, I'm going to get kind of nerdy here, but we're shooting ProRes 444, I didn't want to bake in too much warmth. I wanted to be able to give the colorist some latitude to work with. So this is an, a simple example of being able to do that and, um, and dial, it up, you know, dial it in with an iPad um, at will, just like that. And um, he's just been phenomenal with keeping up with all that stuff. And um, the work I do with LA, he makes it feel like, you know, like the stuff I'm doing here and there is pretty seamless together. Like I feel like everything we, we do together is pretty, pretty top notch. And he's a, he's a treasure for the Bay Area and I hope he never ever retires. Mm -hmm.